Harwich blog, which is part of AD Makepeace, which is the second largest cranberry growing company in the world. AD Makepeace has about 2,000 acres of cranberry bog, ranging in everywhere in size from half an acre to 75 acres in size. Uh, as I said, 2,000 acres, but there's approximately 13,000 acres for the total farm. Uh, so much of the uh, many of the bogs are surrounded by forest or open land like you have here. Well, we basically have uh, 10 different species of, uh, 10 different varieties of cranberries here. Some of them are early blooming, such as your early blacks, and others are your late blooming, such as your house. What do you do in order to get enough pollination? And you have some great ideas going on. We've got clover under solar panels, we've got pollinator garden, you've got issues of working these huge bogs in very, very urbanized areas so that you have problems with your neighbors because of the honeybees. And so you have this great big project where you've got hundreds of thousands of dollars of bumblebees coming in, commercial bumblebees. You're doing a fair amount of experimentation. and One of them is by seeing if you can manipulate honeybee behavior in order to have them forage for, for pollen to a greater degree. Because one of the things that's most interesting about cranberry and honeybees is that we don't see them pollen collecting. Honeybees do not pollen collect. We've been working with a company called Contact to test out their product, which is a basically is consists of a strip with a packet of brood pheromone in the strip that is put between frames of a beehive and the brood pheromone makes the worker bees think that there's more young to take care of and if the workers think there's more young to take care of then they're going to be out there collecting more pollen and as a result doing more pollination to feed those uh, developing young. The east and west coasts, we tend to have smaller parcels that are isolated in the woods. They're built in old cedar swamp locations. Uh, and for a long time, I think, native pollinators played an important role in, in that. Mm -hmm. um, with the decline of the native pollinators, we've really become much more dependent on uh, honeybee, uh, renting honeybee hives. Mm -hmm. We still have growers who don't uh, lease hives. Maybe they think they're getting enough pollination from the native pollinators. Some of them used to keep a couple of hives themselves, but have out, had a hard time keeping those hives viable. Uh, and so we, we kind of think we've got an under pollination problem uh, in the industry. And uh, I deal a lot with the fresh fruit growers and we think some of our keeping quality issues might be related to underpollination or poor pollination. This is the house variety. So this is our late season native Massachusetts variety. And to give you some example, a, a good house crop might be 200 or 250 barrels per acre. Mm -hmm. A barrel is 100 pounds. 100 pounds. Okay. Uh, the new varieties, we're seeing lots of 400 barrels an acre wow. and up. So there's a significant difference. And, and the other thing we see in, in these more traditional varieties, if a single upright sets two or three berries, that's pretty good. And in the newer hybrids, lots of times we'll see, you know, six, seven, eight berries on an upright. So wow. again, big difference. What about the, the pollination requirements of these new varieties? Are they really, are they attractive to pollinators or is that a concern? Uh, it's a good question and, and it is a concern uh, because it seems like there is definitely some preference for varieties uh, in pollination and at this point we just don't know enough about them. Uh, the fact that they uh, fruit at a higher percentage, they, the potential is there for a bigger crop, we think their pollination needs are going to be higher. and. Uh, maybe the way we're doing pollination now isn't going to be enough to support the number of flowers we're going to have out there. At a hive and a half per acre, uh, 
you know, I think we're probably uh, cutting it close on some of these, on these new varieties that have more flowers. We mostly have older varieties. Um, they require, I believe, less inputs. The expectation is less. Um, one, of, one of the pollination concerns, I think, of some of those super hybrids is that it used to be one hive would generally uh, translate to about 100 barrels of cranberry. So when our expectations were 200 barrels to the acre, mm -hmm. we would go two hives to the acre. Right. The new varieties have expectations around four and 500 barrels to I the see. acre. If you would need that level of pollination, if you would have that many more blossoms, I don't even know where they would come from. Uh, it's a, I think pollination is a limiting factor that we haven't considered in some of our planning. Uh, they also bloom earlier, the new hybrids bloom earlier. Um, you'll see when you look at the staging field, our uh, migratory pollinators are just arriving now. Mm. And uh, blueberries, they, they have later varieties now than they, than they used to. So right. we're on a collision course with our, who we share our, our pollinators with. We've made a lot of changes in our our uh, approach to our landscape in our farm. We tolerate things that bloom that would be intolerable to us. Um, we're learning uh, to make room for, uh, learning a lot about bumblebees. And they are so different than honeybees. I, I thought I had the honeybee thing down, um, but bumblebees are in, entirely different. And I say bumblebees, I know there's a broad spectrum of native bees, but for us, the workhorse would be, would be bumblebees. I'm for anything that pollinates the cranberry, <laughs> so. Well, we, I, I think for us to stay in farming in Massachusetts, right. uh, we are, we're an urban state, pretty much. We have to find, use all of the menu choices that we can, and, and that's one of the things that, that we're working toward, not just trying to create a better environment, and we need some help with that. Uh, maximizing, uh, exploiting all of our natives that we can. At sure. the same time, we also need to have more local beekeepers. And right now, it's not attractive for, for people to want to keep bees. Um, no, it's a challenging time for, for beekeepers because of the many challenges yes. that the honeybee faces. It's not just one thing. It's not the same amounts. Different locations are, are entirely different. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm very pleased that you that you're willing to be, to look at it like we need to know more information. Um, so often you'll, you'll talk to somebody that their mind is made up and that's that. And, and I respect that. Well, I kind of like you like to hurry, so. <laughs> <laughs> like you hurry up and come up with, a, with an answer. Well, yeah. that's, I, I would that would be of, nice, wouldn't it? We, we, I think we're in crisis and I would like you to hurry. Okay, well, we hear that loud and clear. Okay. And thank you. Thank you.